The first moments of a video game are so important. Even before we create our save file or name our character something distasteful, our relationship to the game is already being shaped. The game designers are acutely aware of this, that, despite even the most good faith engagement with a game, we'll be judging a book by its cover. We'll make all sorts of inferences about the gaming experience ahead of us based on the opening minutes, even seconds of a game. Because of this, game designers finely tune those first moments to convey a game's tone, set the stage for the type of play to be had, and get us excited to dive in. Music plays an absolutely indispensable role in all of this. Because music can so effectively and efficiently communicate emotion to us, it's key in making an appropriate first impression. To examine this more closely, let's survey a handful of contrasting video game title sequences and explore just how they encapsulate the essence of their game. I'm ProcoCat, welcome to VG Amazing, my series on video game music appreciation. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask makes an especially interesting first impression with its title sequence. First, out of blackness spins the titular mask. Its approach is silent at first, but then... That's the first thing that the player hears when starting up this game, followed shortly by the unsettling giggle of the happy mask salesman. <laughs> For fans of the Legend of Zelda franchise, this introduction is likely surprising, maybe even a little off-putting. Previous titles in the franchise led with music trending towards the magical and heroic. Or the lonely and sentimental. Majora's Mask is a different animal, and its first moments communicate that clearly. However, whatever dark things our imaginations have conjured after viewing the introduction, which withholds music in favor of disturbing sound effects, are likely diffused by the first notes of the title theme. The folksy ensemble of woodwinds, harp, and ocarina alongside quaint images of town activity are a sharp contrast with what we just saw and heard. With consonant harmonies and a pleasing, singable melody now in our ears, that intro seems miles away, like a nightmare thankfully passed. Cutely, whenever Link, our protagonist, is on screen, the ocarina enters to highlight his importance. The music is moderate in tempo, and the characters we see are just going about daily life. There's no rush, no worry, seemingly. One might never guess, given these scenes, that a literal ticking clock counting down to doomsday will bring urgency to the gameplay. Things are peaceful, at least for now. This music and these images, while they seem unassuming, are priming us for a more emotional response later in the sequence. A dramatic juxtaposition is being set up. After night has fallen on the town, our point of view is brought to the clock tower. As the camera swirls around the structure, new ideas intrude upon the music. Low strings play notes that subtly disagree with the harmony and melody above, creating dissonance. Then the impish antagonist of the story is seen for the first time, wearing the mask that spooked us in the introduction. His appearance is highlighted by the entrance of a nasal wind instrument not previously heard, played in an exotic, ornamented way. This tells us that this character is of another place. So much is communicated to the player in that dramatic juxtaposition. We immediately understand that his arrival doesn't bode well for the town. In a few moments, every element of music is electrified with change. Consonant harmonies are traded for dissonant, and the bucolic instrumentation of woodwinds and harp gives way to low strings, that reedy melody instrument, and the rather violent first appearance of percussion. The addition of these last instruments brings the music to its loudest point yet heard. Skillful use of sound effect and music tell the player that Majora's Mask is about dark intentions suddenly imposed on a previously secure town. We can infer, therefore, that the action of the game will be about restoring peace. Contrast this with, say, the title music of Animal Crossing. Unlike Majora's Mask, Animal Crossing doesn't have a pre-title sequence. We're treated to the game start screen immediately, and it's accompanied by this fun music. This music very quickly and efficiently communicates what gaming experience Animal Crossing has in store for us. Its funky style with syncopated rhythms and jazzy harmonies tells us we're in for a quirky, offbeat time. We can hear that the stakes will be low, as there's virtually no conflict in this music, and the number of unique instruments involved are few. Just two players, a drum set and piano. Composers often communicate the scope of a play experience with a parallel instrumentation. Big orchestras for big adventures, little chamber groups for more intimate or simple stories. The tempo is moderate and easygoing, appropriate for a game with very little urgency. 
We're not rushing to save a land from evil in Animal Crossing. We're catching fish, getting chased by bees, and uh, paying off debt. That the music here is of little intensity is purposeful and appropriate. We're being well primed for the gameplay by this music. Just imagine if this game's title music featured a full orchestra. What if it was fast, splashy, with lots of dynamic contrast? That'd set us up for the wrong gaming experience entirely. It's important for game designers to create the right expectations. This modest piece is doing more work than we may realize upon first listening, though. The little melodic figure here goes on to be responsible for tying together the voluminous soundtrack of this game. It appears in many forms, straightforward and disguised, over the course of the game's soundtrack, but it's first heard here. Seeds are being planted in this otherwise unassuming little piece. Now for the big daddy of pre-title sequences. This is how Chrono Cross begins. We hear a handful of instruments, flute, guitar, fretless bass, and a scattering of percussion for color. The music is melancholy, beautiful, and, like the visuals, restrained. All we see for the first full minute is this one shot of a book being examined in wavering lamplight. Chrono Cross is playing with its cards close to its chest. If the sequence ended here, we'd probably assume that this game has an intimate and small-scale story to share. However, that's not the case. Chrono Cross is using the classic technique of withholding to build potential energy for a satisfying release. Soon, everything lets loose. Every element of music makes an about face, and a whole hand's worth of new cards are laid on the table. The tempo increases dramatically, and many new instruments enter, with more to come. With the entrance of those additional instruments, we ratchet up a couple notches in loudness, and this is all paired with increasingly dramatic and exciting visuals. With this subversion, Chrono Cross is communicating its range of expression. We're in for a story that is at times intimate, and at others, thrilling. This is music for an incredible adventure. The combined visual and aural experience Chrono Cross leads with is an embarrassment of riches. This game is telling us that it's got everything. Melodies to soothe you, rhythms to drive you, dragons, explosions, magic, furries, uwu, and so much more. The impact of this exciting audio-visual experience is made more intense because of its intimate opening. We are titillated more for having had the full musical forces withheld from us until the right moment. What an awesome introduction to a game. I have one more example I'd like to mention. Let's look at a game with an opening sequence that turns conventions on their heads, one that takes the technique of withholding to a whole new level. When we boot up The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, we get the simplest of title screens. The name of the game appears in small white text over a black background. What's more, there's no music whatsoever. What does this game have in store for us? These opening moments aren't telling. Any information from which to make inferences is withheld from us. Gameplay begins immediately. Link arises from sleep as he does in nearly all games in the franchise, then acquires the Sheikah iPhone X2200 and some clothes, unfortunately. Still, we've had no music. The Sonic experience thus far is simply comprised of ambient sound, sound effects, and voice acting. The player navigates Link down a tunnel toward light that promises us much needed context. At a certain point, the game takes control of Link and... We are treated to a beautiful swell of lushly orchestrated music, a grand vista of the expansive Kingdom of Hyrule, and finally, a for real appearance of the game's title. Fittingly, the first instrument we hear is a piano, the instrument that will come to define the entire score of Breath of the Wild. The combined stimuli of this breathtaking landscape reveal and the burst of musical information is staggering. The game designers withheld so much from us so that this first taste of the adventure ahead might be especially flavorsome and enticing. I hope you enjoyed this short survey of video game title sequences and their music. While there are many great game introductions out there, I thought that this selection showed just how skillfully composers and game designers can prime you to experience their work appropriately, and the variety of motions they can elicit from us. 
In your opinion, what are some standout video game title themes or opening musical moments? Let me know in the comments below. One I thought about including is the title sequence of Earthbound, which begins in a genuinely alarming fashion, but then quickly shifts to irresistibly fun music and visuals. I'm going to save discussion about Earthbound and its music for another video, though. I have many more subjects on video game music appreciation that I'd like to discuss with you, so please do subscribe so that you can be in the know when I post again. Follow me on Twitter at ProcoCat for updates on my next video project and to hear some of the musical shenanigans I get up to. Thanks for watching.